You provide a service for money, not time. I'm going to say it again. You provide a service for money, not time. Don't sell time for money. When you think about it, again, time is the most valuable asset that exists for us. No more time, no more time. You know, you know that's not... <laughs> so each moment is valuable. And to be able to maximize something and take something to the next level, you want to make sure that your services are what brings the money. Your service can actually bring in reoccurring money. You know what I mean? Your service does that. So when you think about um, uh, people saying, well, if it's just time for money, I heard a quote where somebody said, look, it took me 20 years to learn this skill. I'm charging you $10,000 for this. Though it may take me 20 minutes to do it, I'm charging you $10,000. Guess what? The results are the results. The results are the results. We're going to talk more about results, but the results are the results. And guess what? That was still 20 years of time. They're still paying for time to some degree if they want to think about it like that. But I'm telling you, I'm providing you a service. Even though it took me 20 minutes to make $10,000, you needed the value that I brought to you because it was a value to help take your business or your, your awesome life to the next level. All right? So you provide a service for money. Not your time. Now, again, you got to do what you got to do so you can get to that sometimes. It is what it is. Trust me, I, I, I know. But nobody is going to pay you. Nobody's going to pay you what you can pay yourself. And that's the only way you can do that is through service. Now, what you have to do, though, is look at the areas of your life. Look at the areas of your life. That's what we call a paradigm. The paradigm is programming the beliefs, the subconscious with action and results based on those actions. All right, let me say it again. The paradigm is programming beliefs, the subconscious with action and results based on those actions and those beliefs. All right, so that's what a paradigm is. Now, your paradigm controls your perception and your perception of reality. All right, my paradigm too. So my paradigm and your paradigm controls the perception and your perception of reality. Now, when we think about it, the only thing that matters is really what we think about something or how we see something. What is our perception? What do we think about uh, a particular, you know, way of living because somebody who sees a certain way of living may look at it as amazing. The other person may look at it as, as like, oh my God, you know what I mean? <laughs> a certain person may be making a certain amount of money and be like, oh my God, this is an amazing life. And that person may be only bringing in, you know, $30,000 a year. And you got somebody else that's making $30 million a year. And because they're so stressed, they, you know, or whatever they're going through, you know, they're like, ah, uh, you know, it, it's perception. It's all perception. So, and their and your perception is actually your reality. Now, once you, you know, once once you change though, once you change how you look at something, guess what? What you look at changes. Once you change how you look at something, what you look at changes. You know why? Because that's your perception. Think about it. When you would look at something or when somebody says something about somebody, right? And um, you might be looking at that person a little skeptical at first. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe you look like your baby daddy or something like that. <laughs> you know, maybe look like your baby mama. You know, you know, but guess what? When you get to know that person and you see that that person is just amazing, your mindset is, hmm, I, I, that's, I, that's my sister. 
You know, that's my brother. You know what I mean? So, so, guess what? The perception changed. You know what I mean? So once you change how you look at something, you change the way that you look at that person because of an interaction, whatever the case is. But once you change the way you look at it, what you're looking at changes. All right. Now, perception is a higher faculty. Perception is a higher faculty. Now, perception is the will, the reason, the imagination and intuition of how you see something. I'll say it again. It's the will, the reason, the imagination, and the intuition of how you see something. Look at it. I'll give you an example. So the perception of people who own this property, picture here, you know, right here, it's this amazing mansion, pictured right here, have a different perception about money than most. They have a different perception about money the most. I'll give you another example. Mark Cuban and Damon John. I heard Damon John say something. He said, uh, look, if Mark Cuban had my money, Mark Cuban would jump off of a bridge because Mark Cuban is a multi-billionaire. Now, even though Damon John is worth 300 million, you know, Mark Cuban would be like, I'm broke. It's the difference of perception, all right? So that's just, you know, that, that's really what it comes down to. And, and, and that being based on us having a uh, perception-based uh, faculty, you know? We're able to think differently. Now, the perception is the difference. Honestly, that's what separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom. You know, they operate on instinct, which is actually perfect. It's perfect. Instinct is actually perfect because it's directly from God. This is what, you know, what we got from God. They have a different thing. I'm going to say this too real quick. If you notice with their instinct, when the animals start leaving somewhere and you sitting up there looking crazy and then next thing you know, a dang old tornado that came through or earthquake that happened, guess what? They was already gone. That was instinct. It's perfect. All right. So we've given these higher, we've been given these higher faculties and through the higher use and through the higher use of those faculties, we can create our world. Now, so they don't necessarily have the ability, they can create nests and stuff like that, but when it comes, and but but they're happy with what they're doing. You know what I mean? They, they're not thinking about us, you know? So when we think about what we're doing, it's the higher use of the faculties that God has given us with perception and being able to see things differently and create actually things that, you know, make our worlds the way that we want it. You know, it's a different level of, of perception, you know? So, and also your perception is how you look at something and guess what? That's going to determine your reality. The way you look at something is, the, is going to determine your actual reality because that's going to be what you see. Good or bad, bad or good, fair or unfair, the way you look at it is actually what's going to determine your reality. Your paradigm controls your perception. Your paradigm controls your use of time. It controls your use of time. What do you when you look at something a certain way? Anything that you, that's that, that's not in your paradigm. Uh, or something that you desire or, or the way that you think about something, that's what you're going to spend time on. If it's something that, you know, if if <laughs> your paradigm is in, is in a place where, you know, you decide to continue to watch, you know, I don't know, uh, Wayne Brady throughout the day, you know what I mean? And watch, <laughs> you, you know, that and watch TV all day. That That's your perception. Maybe that's how you grew up. I don't, I, I don't know. But somebody else may look at that and be like, hmm. No, I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That ain't that ain't my thing because I want to be here. You, you, you know, so that's use of time. That per other person is gonna be like, ping, 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 ping. What else can I get done? Ping, 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 ping. That and that and that's what it's about. Honestly, that's more my my, my speed. And I, but I love everybody. All right. Now it's also what you do with your time that really makes a difference in what's going on. You know, it really makes the difference because it determines on it determines where you're going and where you're actually going to remain. 
<laughs> you know, or you, it, it, period. So if you're going north, meaning where you, you're trying to go, or you're going south, in, in so many words, where it's it's not going to be beneficial for you. So that's what's going to make the difference. The use of that time. Are you going? Are you working? Are you are you hitting your goals? Are you making sure that? You know, your family is good. Are you attentive to your wife? Are you attentive to your children? Along with taking care of everything. What kind of environment are you creating? What kind of environment are you making sure that your family is in a place that they're able to be with you wherever you go? And everything is taken care of because you're using your time in alignment with the frequencies that he would have for you to be about. You know what I mean? Or go about doing because guess what? We call that your purpose. All right. So your paradigm also controls your creativity. Now, what, what, what we, when we're creative, that's where we spend time. <laughs> you know, when you're creative, you, you, you spend a lot of time there. You know, I'm a creative. You know, I was talking to somebody about that earlier. I spend a lot of my time. This is creative to me, you know, and, and to me, creative also is, uh, and can, you know, right along with, uh, communication. So creative communication, that's really what it all is, you know, uh, but your paradigm controls your creativity. And guess what? You are creative. You're creative. You've had to create many things that you may not even realize that. And a lot of you are, you just creative in your own way, you know, so it's not, you know, about the person that is more creative than the other. It really doesn't come down to that because you can have somebody that is extremely talented, but they don't want to. And then you got this person over here that may be not as time, but they work their butt off. And guess what? That person will end up beating this person because that person's paradigm is different. Their, 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 their perception of what, you know, they're spending their time on is different, you know? So, but the other person utilizes it more, you know, that person just happened to be more creative and figuring it out, you know? And, and that's what it really comes down to. And guess what? The one who utilizes it more is the one who wins. It's the one who wins. So, again, your paradigm controls your perception, controls your use of time. It is basically what you do with your time that determines your reality. And guess what? You are creative, but it's not about one person being better than the other. It's the one who utilizes it the most. Let's keep moving. How y'all doing? Y'all all right? All right. All right. I, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. All right. Your paradigm controls your effectiveness. Oh. Your paradigm is the program that controls your behavior. So your behavior is going to determine how effective you are with something. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, if you're not putting your effort into something, you know, like cooking that good food and you decide to not pay attention to the, the, the ingredients and all that other good stuff, somebody's going to be like, mama, this ain't good. Or daddy, this ain't that good. You, you know what I mean? So it's going to determine your behavior, your paradigm, the way you is going to determine your effectiveness, effectiveness when you come to creating a, a particular business deal. And it's your behavior that determines how effective you even are. You got to be effective first. You know what I mean? You have to be in a place where you're like, what you're even doing matters. All right? So your effectiveness comes from, again, your paradigm, the way that you think about something, what you believe about something. And as you improve your effectiveness, your productivity goes to a whole nother level. As you improve, improve, I'm sorry, your effectiveness your productivity goes to a whole nother level. Think about that. Well, you sitting up here doing something and you, uh, you know, you're enjoying what you're doing. But guess what? When you take, you know, you start to focus in in a whole different way. Your effectiveness goes to a whole nother level because you're looking at it completely different. How can I compress time and be getting more out of it? Whatever that is. How can I compress time, close that gap, and get more out of something? It's extremely important for you to have an integrity-based operating system, <laughs> OS, because that's going to determine how you deal with anything. 
You know, the term that they say, how you do it, uh, the, the, you know, one thing is how you do everything. It's a true statement. It's a true statement. And it's talking about the underlying integrity of something. So if you, if you be <laughs> on some garbage, you be running around just doing crazy stuff, guess what? Lying stuff, you know, just, you know, doing people dirty or, you know, doing, you know, that, you're going to get that, you know. So as you improve your <laughs> effectiveness, your productivity goes up. All right. Effectiveness closes the time gap, as I said before. And it's all controlled, guess what? By your paradigm. Now, your paradigm controls your logic. Our paradigm controls controls our logic and the attitudes that we have about what we're dealing with or what we're trying to do. Now, think about it. The Wright brothers. Look at the diagram here. I mean, the picture's right here. Now, everyone thought that they were crazy. Everybody did. Some people think you crazy about what you're trying to do. I know folks who thought, thought that about me, but check this out. Two bicycle mechanics, and they are about to fly through the air. All right, two bicycle mechanics, they're about to fly through the air. And actually, the American government has spent millions of dollars already attempting this. They, they, they've already done it. So they, they're like, look, they couldn't even do it. So guess what? They didn't even believe it could be done. But the Wright brothers did something that we all have to do, which is actually the key. And it's the law. They worked the law. They created an image in their mind, which God gave them, that they could actually put their hands on it. They could see it. They could actually, you know, lay fingers on what they, you know, were doing. And guess what? They didn't let that other people or, or, or logic, you know, stop them. Now, people have been trying to put, it's, you, you're putting uh, something that's weighing more than, you know, the air itself in the air. An airplane weighs thousands of tons. And you're talking about put, putting that in the air. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> you're going to put that in there? Yeah. <laughs> I'd have said the same thing. <laughs> Straight up. And I'd have figured it out. So you got to be the same way. So, you know, even though they said that they couldn't do it. And they didn't let logic stop them. I'm saying to you, don't let logic stop you. Just because somebody, you know, says, oh, man, you know, I don't know. That ain't got nothing to do with you. You, you have a mission. You have a goal. This has nothing to do with that person. All right. So your paradigm con controls your logic. And the Wright brothers definitely uh, proved that. And I just want to bring back, you know, the meaning of the paradigm. Now, the paradigm is the program that controls your behavior, your beliefs, and your actions. Again, the paradigm is the program that controls your behavior, your beliefs, and your actions. Now, Nikolai Tesla, I'm not talking about the Elon Musk Tesla, but the, the actual guy, the Tesla guy. Um, his quote that he said, and, which is the absolute truth is, if you want to find out the secrets of the universe, then think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Isn't that something? I'm going to say it again. If you want to find out the secrets of the, of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Now, Nikola Tesla was the man. Uh, you have to look him up and you know figure out what he was doing. But he was the man. Uh, and it's actually the non-logical things that change the world. So when you think about, again, this plane being put up in the air, there's tons and tons and tons and tons of steel. We're going to put it up in the air. And yeah, it's going to go across the world. We're going to figure it out. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're about to do that. You know, it's, it doesn't make any sense. But that's non-logical. Logic only came in after the non-logical made the statement and created the environment. And guess what that is? The statement comes from a decision. The Wright brothers made a decision that we about to put this, we about to make this happen, no matter what. I don't care what they say. We're bicycle mechanics. That has nothing to do with us. We're about to make this happen. And that's how you have to be. That's how I have to be. That's what we put down here for. Now, also, your paradigm controls your ability to earn money. Now, Brock Proctor 
uh, 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 the person I actually, you know, study and, and I've been studying him for years. He, look him up. He's he, he's my mentor. You know, I've not met him in person or anything like that. He passed away, but I've been studying him for years. And, um, you know, basically he always would do something when he would uh, take on a client. He would ask them, what's the most they ever made in a year? What's the most they ever made in a year? And he said that that would tell him where that person's paradigm is. You know, where, how they, you know, where they are as far as their family, where they are as far as, you know, when it comes to uh, just where they are, because money plays a big part, you know, and where you may be mentally and, uh, you know, belief system wise. So if you want to change something, though, well, actually, I'll say it like this. Your income is a reflection of your paradigm. So how much you're making is the way that you see yourself. And what I mean by see yourself, that's what, now you may be going to another level because they're, they're levels and things, you know, but in, in real terms, again, Mark Cuban having Damon John's money, he would think he was broke, you know? So at the end of the day, <laughs> his income level is a reflection of him, meaning Damon John. And Mark Cuban's level is a reflection of his paradigm. Now, it's not that Damon John ain't on his way up there because he's going. You know, we all have our process. So at the end of the day, it's really a part of how... Now, if you have somebody that, let me say it like this, is making $40,000 a year. And then you got somebody that's making $200,000 a year. Their paradigms are different. Their belief about money is different, no matter what. And it doesn't have anything to do with intellect, meaning how much college you had. Because it's a lot of people that are in college, again, that are just, <laughs> they they make less. Than, actually, I, I've seen it in, in, in cases where the person that didn't graduate from college, most of the people that were, you know, uh, did go to college were working for the people that didn't go because they had a different understanding when it came to uh, generating income, all right? All right, so now if you want to change your income, you must first change your paradigm. When you think about it, if you're thinking about making more money, you have to, in some cases, you got to scale up. You may have to do some things differently. You got to focus on a whole nother level. You have to focus on a level that is in, in, in frequency to where you want to go. That's why it's good to be around people that are where you want to go because then you can match that frequency. You can tune in to where they are because if you're not exposed to that, you you, you know, but your frequency and your job is to even sometimes, uh, because a lot of times if your frequency frequency's out there, it's going to come back. It's going to come to you anyway. You're going to find yourself meeting up with the people or getting around that energy because your frequency is going to that, to that level. You know what I mean? But, um, if you want to change your income, you have to think on a different, you know, level. You have to change your paradigm. Your your, your income will not change if you're still thinking you broke. That's why you got a lot of people who were lotto winners. They may have gotten a lot of money. Bam, they got five twenty thousand million, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and boom, they were broke in three years because they did not change the paradigm of who they were financially. They were still broke. So they spent their money in a way that was not wise. You know, so the paradigm and their income changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it went right back down. And that's actually the temperature. I'll get to the temperature in a little while. But like a thermostat, I'll bring talk about it a little bit later. But a thermostat, if you put the thermostat on 70 and if they, you know, somebody opens up the door and and the goes down to 65 the thermostat goes down to 65 and when they close because air is coming in you know you're like man what, what's going on with that you're looking at it, it says 65 you're like whoa 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 oh door boom close the door back once you close the door back it's going to go back up to 70 just like there's a person who says man i only you know i'm i'm at zero right now i just made 300,000 last year that person's going to figure out a way to get it back up to 300,000. Quick. 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 
That's their paradigm. They may have went flat broke, but they about to be back up three, 300 real quick. And then more. You know what I mean? So, but I want to bring back up uh, the meaning of the paradigm. The paradigm is the program that controls your beliefs, your behaviors, the subconscious, and the actions that produce an outcome. I'm going to read it again. The paradigm meaning is the program that controls your beliefs, behaviors, uh, the subconscious, and the actions that produce an outcome. Now, the paradigm can do wonders for you. If your beliefs are that you are in alignment and in frequency with what you desire and what God has for you because he planted it there, you're on your way. You're on your way. Now look at the areas of your life that your paradigm has enormous influence over. It's your ability to earn money, your perception, meaning how you see something, your use of time, your creativity, your effectiveness, your productivity, and your logic. Now your program, I mean your paradigm is actually the program and that has all those things. But guess what? It looks like it's in a box, right? You see, it's a box right there. It's nothing else is going to happen in that box. Because guess what? Every time you go to move one of them, whether it be your creativity, let's say you wanted to move your creativity to another level. Boom. You hit the wall and you bounce right back. You bounce right back. So guess what? If you decide, and when you decide to change your paradigm or the paradigm itself, a decision is made. You said, I'm no longer going to live like that. You said, I'm no longer going to say, uh, 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 use an excuse. You say, I am going to achieve what I want to achieve no matter what. Guess what? The wall comes down. Everything comes down. You see that? You see freedom. There is no wall. You know what I mean? Now, it doesn't mean that you changed anything, except you made a decision. It all comes down. I mean, there are no boundaries uh, you have to, you, anymore, you know, it, it, the boundaries are over with. All you got to do is just move one. Boom. I want to be more effective. I'm going to make a decision to take my effectiveness, effectiveness to the next level. My focus to the next level. My productivity to the next level. Because guess what? If you use, uh, change the use of your time, that's going to have you do what? Earn more money. And guess what? That's going to have you Look at life a little different, your perception. When you see life a little different, that's going to do what? Enhance your creativity because you're going to have more. I can do this better. I can do this. Guess what? That's making you more effective. When you're more effective, guess what? <laughs> that's taking your productivity to the next level. Then... You can say, see, logic works inside of that. You have people that own the companies with the vision and that make it happen. But then the managers, the people that work inside the company to keep the, they're the logic. They come after. All right, life change. Just imagine. I want you to just imagine. Just imagine your, how life would change you know, if you just looked or, or, or focused in on one and improving one of the areas uh, in your life, just think about that. If you focused on making more money, being more, just focused on being more effective, guess what that would do for your life? I'm learning it right now, too. I'm, I'm talking to y'all. Hey, <laughs> I love it, too. I love it. All right, so and that, that came from Bob Proctor. So he basically just said, just imagine how your life would change as you begin improving in any or all areas of your life. Think about that. Think about that. The change would be huge. Huge, 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 huge. Man, the change would change everything in your life. It's so huge. You know what I mean? And guess what? Once that happens, the change is permanent. That's the beautiful thing to know. The beautiful thing to know is that 
The change, what you understand, would be huge to be able to change your family's life because you made a decision. Changing your life because you made a decision. That would be, cha the change would be huge. And guess what? It's permanent. It's permanent once you change your paradigm. You can't go back to that though, to the other stuff. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because you've created an awareness. You can't go back because you've created an awareness. Now, once you are aware of something, or like when somebody becomes aware of how to make or how money is really earned, like them making it, no one can take that away from them. They'll always make money. Or when you become aware of what the wealth, like the wealthy really know, you know what I mean? When you, like the real secrets, <laughs> you know what I mean? No one can take that from you. No one could take the, the conversation which you have in the, uh, directly with a billionaire. No one can take that and they gave you the game. Nobody can take that from you. Nobody. All right. So guess what? If you just changed your perception. Example. I'm going to give you another example. Now, Bob Proctor talked about this. So guess what? He said that if you write down a problem in full detail, like write down everything, you know, make it as detailed as possible, and you sit at a table, sit at the table, turn the paper around, you know, like you know, after you've written it down, turn it around, like somebody's sitting across from you, all right? Now, imagine the person sitting across from you is somebody that you respect, and that's extremely successful in what, you know, you, it, it, that you are trying to figure out, the problem that you're trying to figure out. You know, if you're trying to figure out how to save your marriage, you, you might not want to ask, <laughs> you know, certain people that question. You know what I mean? So you, you, you want to figure out somebody that's successful in what you're doing. All right. Push the paper toward the other side. And imagine that that person is sitting over there. And you ask that person or you ask the question. How would they handle this problem? How would Mark Cuban handle this problem? If it's a financial situation. You know, how would, you know, my mom have handled this problem if, you know, she were here? You know? So when you think about those types of things, you, you imagine the person and then guess what? You push it down a little bit, a little further down. And then you say, well, how would, <laughs> how would this person that I, you know, love so much, you know, if I'm an actor, how, if I'm an actor trying to figure out how to, how to do this particular role, I would say, well, how, how, how? How would Samuel L. Jackson try to figure this role out or this, this, this script out? That's a good one too. <laughs> how, how would he figure it out? So, you know, what, how would he solve this problem? How would he handle this problem? You know, so you want to take the, 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 the example and, and do it like that only because it's a physical thing. And physical, you know, it's still frequency. This is all frequency. It's all energy. This is energy. We talk to you, it is energy. We're going through an energy device. So it's, it's all frequency. All right? So ask that question. And guess what? When you ask that question and imagine it and wait for the answer that, that you will get, you will be tapping into that person's frequency. You will be tapping into that person's thought pattern or thought frequency when it comes to something. You will be in that, that, that same energy. And that energy is frequency and it's the beautiful, most beautiful thing ever. It's the most real thing ever. Now, Napoleon Hill talked about big money. Napoleon Hill is the author of Think and Grow Rich. And basically, he looked at and you know, studied uh, over a 20 year period, I think like 500 millionaires back in the 20s, the most successful people ever. And so what he found out is that he called these people big money people, you know, and back in this, back in the twenties. And what he did was, and he found out what they would do is lock into a power of life that he called a river. Now, one side of the river flows in one direction and the other side flows in the opposite direction. Now, one way 
is to poverty and destruction. The other way is to prosperity and abundance. Now, if you are on your way toward the prop, the, 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 the prop, poverty and destruction side, use this concept as an oar. You in the boat, you got the oar. Use this concept as the oar and then flip the boat around. Flip the boat around. Go to the other side. When you flip that boat around, because the river bend, you on the other side. Going towards the prosperity. Going towards the abundance. Going that way. Going where that's flowing. All you had to do was change. You just had to change your way of thinking. You had to make a decision to do that. And guess what? We can. We can. So it's a decision. It's a decision. You know why? Because it's reality. Our perceptions of things. It's how we look at it. Bob Proctor. It's all about how you see it. It's all about how you see it. So think about it like this. A person goes from making 20K a year to 40K a year. And then you got a person that's going from 200K a year to 400K a year. Those people are having the same experience because it's life changing for that person. It, you know, at the end of the day, somebody's still having a double of income going from 20, 20, 20K a year to 40K a year, though it may be pennies. A person that's making 20,000, 200,000 a year may spend 40,000 just, you know, on a trip. Yeah, not maybe not, but I'm just saying, you know. So my point is, is that they still have the same experience. They still have the same, you know, zeal about what's going on because it's a double in their income. Actually, at the end of the day, the numbers don't matter. The only thing that matters, the numbers don't matter. The only thing that matters is the way that they see it and how that person sees it. I remember going from, you know, Shoot, I remember going from, uh, I went from $25,000 a year. Yeah, I showed you. I went from $25,000 a year to $70,000 a year. Yep. Yep, some years ago, I, I went from $25,000 a year to $70,000 a year. And it was a great experience. Taught me a lot. Taught me a lot actually help build me so that I'm able to even speak to y'all today. Just such, such, such great lessons and I'm grateful. All right. Now look at this. Each one of these lines represents a level of vibration. All right. And we refer to each level of vibration as a frequency. Now think about it like this. Two cell phones. They have to, you got somebody that, if I'm, if I'm in, you know, Indianapolis, Indiana, and then you got somebody that's in Singapore, there's a frequency that has to take place from my phone to that person's phone in Singapore, so across the world. We have to meet on the same, same frequency, even though they're, 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 this frequencies that exist are endless. Their frequencies Frequency makes up everything, bottom line, waves, waves, all right? So you have to, out of an, a, an, a, a unlimited, unlimited amount of frequencies, you meet on the same frequency with somebody that is in Singapore. Guess what happens? Magic happens. You start talking to them. Even though we may look at that as, you know, Trivial right now. Think about that. Think about that. That. <laughs> we have the same thing. We have the same thing in us. It's transmitting electronic. Elect, you know energy. It's, con it's co connecting energy. It's transmitting energy. Energy begets energy. Uh, everything you want is on its own frequency. Think about it. That house that you want, that car that you want, 
that life that you want, that, that, that those children that you want, that wife that you want, that husband that you want. There's a certain frequency that person is on. But you have to become somebody else to match that frequency. You have to become somebody else to match that frequency. That frequency is that frequency. That person is already there. Or that house is already there. Or that Lambo was already there. Or that level in, you know, in your company is already there. That level in your business market share is somebody already there. So you got to get up. You got to get on that frequency. You have to get on that frequency. But guess what? It exists and you can. You can. Just like the cell phone. Bing, bing. We the same thing. We all are <laughs> pieces of matter that push out energy. Same thing as a cell phone. Same thing as a computer. Same thing as a, a, a light bulb. It's all energy. Woo. Bars. But the only thing that you, but the one thing that you have to do is you have to become one with it. You have to become one with it. There's no other way for you to get something and you're not one with it. You're not in the same frequency. Again, harmony. When you take, when you, you have a C note, and then you have a, a, a another person that's playing a, another piano and they hit the C note and it's not in the same tune. They got to bring, they got to tune it to bring it in the same frequency. It has to be one, one. And you have to be one with what you want. There is nothing else. I remember Michael Jackson made a statement. He said something like the most beautiful time in music is when you become one with it. And it's very true. It's very true. So when you become one one with the frequency that you, you know, with the frequency to get the good that you desire, guess what? It takes you to another level. And we all have to do this. We all have to get on, got to get on that frequency that we, for the good that we desire. You know, when we do this, it starts to flow to us. It starts to flow to us. When we do this, it just starts to flow to us because we're on that same frequency. There's a, a there, there's a communication there. There's a communication. There's something to talk about. There's a feeling to, 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 to feel, you know, with each other, you know. But I'll say this. We have to ask ourselves, what are your present results? You got to be real. You got to be real with where you are right now. Look at your present results. I have to look at my present results. What frequency am I on? What, 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 where are you mentally? What do you have? What do you have? You got to see this thing. What is it that you're trying to do? Oh, you got to see that. You got to believe that. You got to feel that now. You got to feel every bit of that. You got to be that now. To even get that, you got to be that first. So right now, you can only attract what you're in harmony with. You can only attract what you're in harmony with. You can't attract something that you're not in agreement with. You're not on the same frequency. Get out on the frame, same frequency. Now, money, when it comes to money, and I'm not, you know, when it comes to money, we're all people who understand that money is a very necessary piece of matter, <laughs> you know. But it's very interesting because when we think about money, we think about the paper, but actually, money. Is only an idea of value. Money is an idea of value. All right? So check this out. Money is also probably the most accurate metric because you can get very detailed with money when it comes to your frequency. Do you respect money? Do you look at money a certain way because it's going to tell you how you view yourself. All right, 
So take a look at your income. If it's in sales, take a look at your sales. And then take a look at your results. Look at your results. Now, that is telling you the frequency that you're currently living on. Right then, right now. If you had $40,000 a year right now, that's where you're at. You, you, you leveling up. You Okay, I got a boom, boom, boom. Cool. But that person that's making $40,000 has to be mentally in a place where they are making $30 million. And it's a choice to become that person mentally. That's a choice. That's the frequency that you have to put out. That's the image that you have to have in your mind. All right. And the good thing is we can adjust our frequencies. We can adjust them. I can do it and you can do it. Now, many people find it hard, though, to move ahead. There are a lot of people that find it, you know, hard to move ahead. You know what I mean? Think about it. Sometimes you'd be like, some, folk, some folks find it hard to move ahead. But not hard to go backwards because they're familiar with it, you know. And at the end of the day, energy attracts like energy. You're going to attract, again, who you are. Not necessarily what you want, but who you are. You know, think about it like this. If you look at the, the, the image right here, you got a guy looking back at himself. Now, it depends on his self-image and how he sees himself. He has to see himself a certain way to become this person that's next to him that focused on productivity, focused on believing in himself, focused on knowing and saying, yo, <laughs> I got to level up. I have to get on that same frequency before he was that person before he got there. And then he had to see that house before he got the house. He saw that house. He was in that house already. Before he bought it, he was living in it. <laughs> he was living in it. Right here. The, the, the brain can't d decipher, you know, fake or what's imagined or from real, basically. It's all the same now. You know what I mean? The, the brain can't, you know, decipher that like that. You know, the subconscious, you know, really doesn't, you know, it either, if you're thinking it in your mind and you're experiencing it in your mind, you know, whether it's, you know, you having a nightmare and ain't nobody right there or you scared about something and ain't nobody right there. At the end of the day, it's the vibration that you're on. What kind of vibration are you on? You have to ask yourself that. What kind of frequency are you operating on right now? Ask yourself that. Where am I? And I'll ask you an even more deep question. Where are you playing from? Where are you playing from? I've had to ask myself that too. Change is necessary. Change has to happen in your paradigm for you to go to the next level. So you have to make a decision to become one with what you want. You got to make that decision. Quit listening to people who tell you what you can't do or what can't happen or, you know, people telling you that you're crazy. You're crazy and insane. Don't listen to them. If you can't see it, if you can see it in your mind and stop listening to the other folks, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. God gives it to you. He put it in your mind and then he put it in. He's able to put it in your hands. But you have to be on the frequency of that. You know why? Because it's all done by law. All done by law. And you can have it. I can have it. I can have it. I have it. You have it. It's yours. It's mine. I am, I'm here. You're there. Get on. I mean, the same freaks, whatever it is that you want, 
Whatever it is that we want. I am that. I am that. You are that. You are that. Whatever that is. Let's go. New self-image. That's what this is. When I say that that's what you are, that is your new self-image. It's not a question of, am, you know, am I, you know, dealing with imposter syndrome? Am I thinking about, you know, well, who I'm not and all of it? New you, baby. The new self-image. That's what you are right here. That's what I am. Let's go. I'm so happy that I had an opportunity to kick it with y'all. I love y'all. This has been, this is my first one, y'all. <laughs> so I hope y'all, you, you, you know, you enjoyed it, man. Uh, you know, the healing music, healing life, growth space. I, I, you know, I'm beyond elated to have just had this opportunity. So look, stay tuned for the next one. I love y'all. Let's get to it. Peace.